Low Bethany Church. This is Pastor Joe Carlson, and I am glad that you could join us today. We are in the midst of a new series, Godly Grit, the regular small things we can do in life that will help us see God do the great things that we would love to have happen. And today we'll be focusing on the design and the purpose that he has for each and every one of us in both a daily and weekly way and how it changes our world. As we get into this, and before we look into God's Word, I'd, I'd like to let you know about a few things coming up here at Bethany Church. First of all, last week you heard a little bit about our children's ministry if you were in the services. And we are sharing a video now this week about specifics for that children's ministry. We are excited about what God is doing here at Bethany for our kids, our families with children, and the children of our community. Under the direction of Patty Folly, we hope to tell you more. Look for that video, as, and we will be sharing you more of the details as time goes on. This week, we have another initiative going on. Our adult ministries has focused on bridge groups, smaller groups of people that get together on a regular basis to understand God's Word, to share life together, to serve together, to find their, their way through life. We are excited about what bridge groups mean, and we would love for everyone to be a part of it. This week, you can watch a video featuring Robert Leafblad where he tells all about what bridge groups are about. Before I let you go, before we get into prayer and then, and then the message, one last thing. On September 27th, September 27th, just a couple of weeks away, we'll be taking a day of prayer here at Bethany Church. We're going to do that in three ways. First of all, all of us are going to be asked to fast. If you can fast that day, if it's medically possible and all those things, we would encourage you to take that day for fasting. If you can only take one meal off, that's okay. But our hope is that it's a, a day where we focus on prayer, on repentance, on dependence upon God. Second, we will be setting aside in half hour increments time for the people of Bethany to pray. Our church doors will be open and you can pray here or you can pray at home. Finally, at four o'clock in the afternoon, we'll have a special prayer service where we will take a time to pray over our country, ourselves, our family, for the gospel to go out, for all these things. And we're looking forward to that day being one where prayer becomes the focus of our, of our world and our church. We pick September 27th because that is the Day of Atonement. In the Jewish calendar, it was Yom Kippur. It was the day where people remember to pray and ask for, for deliverance from God. It's a day of repentance for a country. We are taking that for ourselves, and we are offering that same kind of prayer. We hope that you can join us either with fasting, with praying for one of the increments, half-hour increments through the day, or maybe joining us at the service at 4 o'clock. Perhaps you can do all three. Well, before we get into the message, let's go ahead and pray and ask God to speak in and through us in this message. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that you can speak your truth into us through God's word, through what goes on. Remind us that you are with us. Help us to listen to your voice and to hear your prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for what you are doing, for delivering us. I pray that we would have a de healthy dependence upon you, a dependence knowing that we do not have what it takes on our own to live out this life, but we need you. Lord, we pray for our country as we're in the midst of us an election cycle, and we, we know that you can use whichever leader is in place to accomplish your will. Lord, we pray that your will might be done here in our country as it is in heaven. I pray that you would guide our country in this process. Lord, we lift up our country as we continue to grapple with the coronavirus. We pray for our leaders to have wisdom in dealing with it. And we pray for the fallout for those that are maybe ill or whose livelihoods and health has been affected by that coronavirus. It's affecting many places. I pray especially for the schools, especially public education, but all the schools that this this process has had a significant impact on. I pray that you will empower the teachers, administration, and, and students and families to handle what we are facing in this world right now. 
Lord, within Bethany Church, we lift up those with medical concerns. I thank you for the good report we have heard about Blaine, and I pray that his recovery continues. Lord, we lift up before you uh, Catherine, and we pray that her her life and heart, uh, or her the the blood clots, the the um, cancer, all these things, you would use the doctors, physicians, but ultimately we trust in you for healing. And Lord, we lift up Marsha, and we thank you for her recovery. Seems to be going okay. We pray that that continues. Lord, within here at Bethany Church, we're grateful for the people that are part of life. We thank you for our, our missions team, our children's team, bridge groups, for um, how you're providing financially for us. Lord, we thank you for all the people in local care and women's ministries, adult ministries. There's so many people doing their part for worship, for uh, uh, the overseers. In all these things, we count on you for your pouring into us so we can minister to our world. Lord, I specifically lift up the nominating team that's looking into the process for our next overseers that might be joining us. Guide that process, Lord. We invite you to speak your truth into that. Lord, as we look into your word today, remind us that our dependence is on you. Help us to seek you with all of our heart and soul mind and strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today we are looking at God's design, God's purpose. And one thing I, I'd like to give you a little insight that today's message is called The Rest of God. I borrowed that title from a book I read once called The Rest of God. How in, in that book, it advocates for the rest that we need. And we'll be looking into the rest, the daily and weekly rest that we need. And it goes back to the purpose that the designer has for us. I'd like to show you something that I keep in my office that it expresses a little bit about that design. In my office, there's these gears. And you can stop by sometime. You can look at them yourself. They're actually designed to, it's wired together right now, but they're designed to fit together. It's from a 1981 International Harvester school bus. It had a 345 V8 engine and Alice transmission. And that gear is from that bus. Before I was at Bethany, I was a youth pastor. And the summer after 9-11, which I still can't believe the parents allowed this to happen, I took a whole group of students to Brazil on an airplane, and we served in the backwoods of Brazil. We went all over the place, and it was amazing. The impact that that trip had on me and those people was significant. On the way back, we we had a snafu with our tickets, and and because there's no room in coach class, we mo many of us got shifted over to first class. Now I I don't know about you. I've never been in first class before, but I, I just knew it must be God's God's gracious provision for uh, our diligent service in, there in Brazil. Well, we, we took off from a city called Salvador, flew to Sao Paulo, and then from Sao Paulo up to Miami. Well, on the way from Sao Paulo to Miami, we started to get ill. Almost all of us. I can tell you without a doubt, the beef and broccoli from Salvador to Sao Paulo was very good. Something in it did not sit right. And by the time we arrived in Miami, things were not going well for many, many of us. We spent most of that trip sharing space on that airplane bathroom. I, I feel bad forever. I had to clean it afterwards. And we got to Customs, and we could see just beyond Customs in Miami the, the bathroom doors. And I can imagine for safety's sake, for protecting your country, they didn't want people to be able to go into a bathroom and what someone might do. So they said we couldn't use the bathroom. But I explained to the customs agents, unless they let us through those doors, the doors that we could see just across the room, they would have a major issue in that room right then. So we went through those doors, custom way through. We got up to Chicago and some of us had to stay in the hotel, but. By that time, some people were just starting to recover. So the parents sent a bus down. The parents eagerly wanting their children. Clearly, they want their children's back with them. They sent the church bus down to pick them up. Some of us were not ready to travel, though. There was 
uncertainty within the group about what to do. And because I was not feeling well at all, I just, I didn't even care. I was, I was just trying to survive at that point. Well, the decision was made by some people to bring that bus down. They picked up about half of our group. And when they got to Edgerton, Wisconsin, this gear, the gear that I have right here started spinning and that bus didn't move. That 345 V8 was fine. The wheels turned round and round. The wipers on the bus went swish, swish, but that transmission could no longer move. That bus was designed with purpose, but when it wasn't functioning as it could, as it should, the whole thing shut down. It was designed with purpose. And like that bus, we are designed with purpose. We are designed with intentionality and we are designed with limitations. We are not limitless beings. We are made to stay within the parameters that God made for us. And by taking care of our lives, our bodies, on a daily and weekly way, as we pay attention to the designer and pay attention to where our heart and mind is to our Lord and Savior, that's when we can become and live up to the design that he always had in mind for us. We're talking about godly grit today. We're in a new series. It's talking about the little things we can do to help ourselves become who God made us to be. And I don't know about you, in this world of so much uncertainty and so much chaos, so much unknown, isn't it good to know that there is a God that knows these things? And well, we don't always know what the purpose is, he does. And he gives us clear, concise instructions about how we might live through it on both a weekly, on a daily, on a regular basis so that we might live for him. We're designed with this purpose. And there's a story in Exodus that I believe helps us understand best where this comes from. I'd like to read for you a story, the, the, this story. This is where Moses, you might remember the story from back in the day. Moses is leading the people of Israel through the desert. He comes to Mount Sinai, he goes up on the mountain, and he speaks directly to God, which is just remarkable when you think about it. Here's Moses talking directly to God. This is the time when he was going to get the Ten Commandments. It's a time when he's supposed to be guiding these people. He went from a shepherd for 40 years in the desert until now he's going to lead 4 million people through the desert. And I don't know about you, sometimes I feel like God's given me more to take on than I might be ready for myself. He gives me a responsibility I'm not ready for. I think that's how Moses felt in this, this situation. Listen to the questions he asked. Listen for God's response. This is in Exodus Chapter 33, starting with, with verse 12. Moses, Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else distinguishes me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. This story in Exodus 33 is where God talks directly to Moses. Imagine that. God talking directly to us. Just this last week on Friday, or sorry, Thursday, the President of the United States came to our area. What if a few days before that, his secretary or his advisors called you and said, the President is coming to town. He would like to talk with you. He'd like to have a chat around your dining room table. That's remarkable to think about. Moses had that kind of a conversation with his father in heaven. 
And we are invited to have similar conversations to talk freely with our God in prayer. We look forward to doing that on the 27th, but we can do that regularly and all the time right now. In this case, Moses had a design and he had a purpose. And if you're following along today, if you want to write down some notes, it's a good thing to remember first would be that that Moses had a design and we have a design. We are made with purpose. Moses has questions about what that is. In Exodus 33, verse 12, Moses said to the Lord, You've been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moses was in a spot where he knew he was supposed to lead. God had spoken to him clearly at a burning bush. He'd gotten his, his brother Aaron in on it, and he's leading the people out. They cross the Red Sea. They're in the middle of the desert, but... I think at this point, Moses is starting to realize this is a tough gig. If you didn't know it before, it was knowing now. Four million people in the desert? How is that supposed to work? I, I, certainly 40 years with sheep who can kind of fend for themselves in this. And you sort of know how to look after, but they can look after themselves. Now he's got four million people. How do you find water and food and the path to the promised land in all of that? I hear in Moses' question, it says, you've been telling me, lead these people. But he's like, God, can you just help me out? Help me know what's going on. If you've ever been in a situation where you look around what's happening and you wonder, does administration really get what is going on here? Have you ever wondered if the higher-ups really thought through what their decisions have led to? I'm sure Moses is looking at his predicament and saying, God, I get it. You want to get us to a better place. But if this is what you got in mind, a lot of people are going to pay a high price for this. And Moses' question might be ours. God, I know you might be there, but what am I supposed to do with this? Now, I, I know no one in this room. So what is our design? What is our purpose? To get, to get that correct, it's good to go back to maybe Genesis, right to the very beginning. God made the heavens and the earth in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. Now, even though he's God, he rested. He does the same thing with us. He designed us with purpose. So our design has purpose. We were made with a purpose. Our body was made with a purpose. If you read Deuteronomy 5, 13 and 14, it says, Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh is a Sabbath unto the Lord. On it you will do no work, neither you nor your son or daughter, male or female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of the animals, nor any foreigner. God gave us capabilities. He gave us strengths but he also gave us limits he made this whole world himself in six days but he he gave that seventh day back to us as a day of rest think about how god made us with limits he made us with a mind that can think but we don't know everything he gave us bodies that can do things but we can't do everything i, I was talking with a friend this week he gave us free will Free will allows us the capability to choose to love. We, we wouldn't know what love is between us. and I, I wouldn't know how much I love my wife unless I had a choice to love her and her to love me back. And while we sometimes doubt about the limits that God has given, he still gave those to us on purpose to allow us to see and know and understand what this might be about. We might see things differently. We might understand things differently. But my body and my life was made with purpose. Mine, yours was as well. We were all made with purpose. I have two boys, and they're wonderful. I love them both. But I also realize they are each unique and different. And they are special in how they are made. A world was made with purpose. You might remember Psalm 19, verses 1 and 2. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. The whole world 
reveals who he is. His creativity, his wonderfulness, and he gave it design, and this whole world has purpose. Even if we don't always understand it, he knows it. He gave us 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year. That is intentionality, and that is design. Look at your own body. It's We take in food, and it grows and repairs our body. We, we have eyes that can see just imagine how incredible it is that you know we eat a hamburger and eventually it makes cells that allow us to see things that's just crazy incredible when when you think about it the the basics of a little a, a little transmission gear compared to how complex people are how we can have feelings and emotions it's incredible so our world was made with purpose our life was also made with purpose. In Exodus 33, verse 12, you may have heard this. I know you by name. He knows us. And not just as a people. He knows us by name. He knows who we are. He also knows our limits. And he reminded us of them. In, in the New Testament, Jesus even reminded his people of their limits. The key verse for this week, and one I hope you can remember, and we'll be circling back to this before the end, is we were made with purpose. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus offers rest to all. All of us who come to him with childlike faith. He doesn't say, I will give you more strength to overcome. I will make you wiser to be better. He, he offers and said, I will give you rest. As we enter into a relationship with him, as we move into the design that he had for us by being in relationship with our God and Father in heaven, as with our Lord and Savior Jesus, as we understand who he is, we can enter then into rest with him. This is what makes it possible to live out the life that he has in mind. So Moses knows this design, and we can know that design. Next, God clarifies to Moses what that direction is. What's the directive? What's Moses' directive? What's ours? So Moses was looking for specifics. It's like, God, I know you love me. I know you care for me. You know my name. But what I'd really like to know is where I could get some water for this <laughs> tribe of people here. Can I just tell you, God will give us exactly what we need. He gave Moses that, and he's done that for his people throughout history. But I can also tell you what we think we need and what God thinks we need might be different. Well, as I was studying this and I was thinking about this, I can just imagine Moses' frustration. He's trying to do God's will. He's trying to do the way that God wants him to do it. He wants to do it. And, and God doesn't seem to be giving him the answers that he most needs. Have you ever gotten directions that threw you off? I remember putting together a gas grill. And I remember getting most of the way through it. And all of a sudden you have all these extra screws and parts. I'm like, mm, now what am I going to do? The cabinet that doesn't work. We try to fit it into the space it was designed for, and it's not working. Those are just things. Some of us are blessed with children, and it's hard to understand why they are the way they are. We look around at the world that is upon us, and we know that they, these children that God's blessed us with, were designed with purpose, and we do what we can, and yet things don't always work the way that we know they're supposed to. Why doesn't it all just come together? If God's such a wise and knowing and understanding God, why doesn't he make it fit and work? I've got a plan in my mind about what should happen. i got a plan in my mind about what should happen at Bethany. I've got a plan in my mind about all these things. And I can tell you, in so many ways, my plan has not been always what has happened. There's so many things that have deviated from what I think is best. In the end, I'm reminded all the time by what happens here, what happens in my life, what happens in my children, what happens in this whole world around us. It's not always going to be about what we think. Taking you back to that mission to Brazil, 
I don't mind getting stretched. Certain things I expected. But getting food poisoning on the way back, that's not part of the plan. And yet I can tell you what, what I, I can remember exactly so many things happened and I learned, I can tell you, I learned as much, I probably learned more from the difficulties than from just went my way. So how does this all work? Exodus 33 verse 13 says, this is Moses talking back to God. If you're pleased with me, teach me your way so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. We need God to teach us. We do not have insight and knowledge. We do not have understanding about our world like he does. Think about what God knows. He knows all of history and he knows all of the future. He knows my heart and he knows my abilities and my limitations. And he knows everyone else's. So what do we most need? What do we need in the midst of this? We need God to speak in and through us. We, this is what we need. So what's the directive he gives? He gives us a daily directive and he gives us a weekly directive. So the big picture, let's step back before we get into the daily and the week. He says, cast your cares upon him. Trust in me. That's what he says big time. But then he gives us some daily things. He says, daily, let us depend on him. Give my troubles daily to him because he wants to be in relationship with him. Do you believe? Do you believe in God? I know I do. I also can relate to the man in Mark who said, Jesus, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. So our directive is to daily turn to him. Now, as we go into this, I want you to remember that well, uh, a big vacation, a big time of rest might be good. We know even Jesus took a 40-day time away. A fast is what he did, a 40-day 40 40 time away to find what he needed. But that's not where his ultimate, or that's not what he regularly did. What he regularly did is took time away to pray. And we need that as well. Some regular daily time is required. And we need some rest in that. We could talk specifically about sleep in this. I did some research on this. It, according to what I read, all of us were made for seven or maybe eight hours of sleep a night. As we understand that that is the way we are made, we can develop routines to help that to happen. We're also made for a day of rest every week. We can develop routines for that to happen as we thoughtfully think through what we need and we go within the design that God made us, we can achieve that. Now, we could argue, why did God make us this way? Why didn't he make us differently? And we could say, it's not really fair. I was looking into this more. It, it turns out that horses sleep about 2.9 hours a day. God could have made us only needing 2.9 hours of sleep, but that's not how he made us. He made us with that. I heard from somewhere else, snails can sleep up to three years. Snails can sleep three years in between doing something. And it's not always fair either how it works. I found that male lions can sleep up to 20 hours a day, but female lions only sleep 15 because they do all the hunting. I don't know about, I don't know about you, but <laughs> that doesn't seem quite fair. They have to sleep less so they can work more. Now, certainly God gave us adrenaline. There's a product like five-hour energy that we can take on to take on a necessary task for a short amount of time. But we are designed to work with, within the limitations he gave us. If we exceed or go beyond the limitations, we go beyond his directives and eventually it will hurt us. He made people to work six days and then rest for one. We need to, on purpose, take time for rest. And that's for everyone. If you listen to those verses out of Deuteronomy, it's for men and women, the, the servants, it's for horses, it's for the animals, it's for everyone. Everyone was designed to take some time for rest and it makes everything in this world better. Now, let me just tell you, the world will cr crowd out that rest. It is it was required by the slaves in Egypt to work seven days. And God did not like that. He pulled them out of that situation. 
But we live in a world today where we are expected, not as slaves, we're not that, but we are expected to give up, or maybe we even put a burden upon ourselves to work these seven days or long into the night. It's important to understand our limitations and the directives that came from God. We can allow ourselves to go differently, and that's what we must do. Lastly, how does this all happen? How does this all come together? So the, the big picture is we are designed with purpose. And then he gave us specific directives to do both daily and weekly. Let's draw this to a point, and how will we get there? It all comes from dependence upon the designer. Ultimately, it's our trust in him that will make all the difference. As we depend on him, that's where things will go. In Exodus 33, verse 14, it says, The Lord replied, after Moses has asked, How do I find direction? How do I get there? What do you do? And his reply is fascinating. It's powerful. It's life-changing because it's as true to Moses as it is to me. The Lord replied, My presence go, will go with you, and I will give you rest. So what does he want? He wants us to have dependence upon him. My presence go, will go with you, and I will give you rest. Your direction, your insight, everything you need is going to come from him. We have a dependence on the designer. First, in turmoil, as we face problems and difficulties, as we face the most difficult days in our life, he wants us to turn to him. I'm reminded as I, as I think back to that time coming back from Brazil, what would have been the answer in that moment? Certainly, a, I suppose a physician or some, some emodium or something would have helped. But ultimately, what did our, how did we get back from Brazil? It's our hope and our trust in him. If we need direction, where does it come from? If we need to know, should we do this or this? If our ultimate trust in him, we know he can use whatever decision we make for his good purpose. We know that's a promise from scripture. What if our minds can't find rest? What if there's something troubling us and we don't know what to do? We are told he can give rest for our minds. In my, in my world, in my life, I think about all the responsibilities I have. I'm, I'm supposed to be a good dad. And I want to do that so well. It's so important to me that I become the dad I'm supposed to be. And that's more than I can become. To be a good husband, what does that require? It takes time and patience and effort and all these things I'm supposed to be, and I don't always have what it takes. I want to be a great pastor. I want to see Bethany Church flourish and become what God made us to be. And yet what is required of that? It's more than what I can have on my own. I think about the world that I live in. I would love to see the gospel go in the personal relationships, friendships, and the people that I have around me. So all these things seem to be swirling around and coming at me. And what should I put my time and effort into? And I'm reminded all the time, if it depends on me, I will fail. So I look to Exodus. I look to my scriptures. I look to the people of God throughout history. And I realize it's this dependence upon God that makes the difference. Let's read on and Exodus chapter 33, it says, How will anyone know, this is Moses talking back to God, How will anyone know that you look favorably upon me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? Your presence among us sets us, sets your people and me apart from all the people on the earth. What sets us up for success? What helps us be ready for the future? It's this dependence upon God. We can ask for wisdom, we can ask for insight, and most of all, we ask for him. This last week, I signed a permission slip. My son is in science in his school, and he needs permission that says he will try to wear the goggles and mask. Not try. He will wear goggles and a mask in his science classroom so the acid or whatever they're using doesn't affect him. His, the wisdom of the teacher and the wisdom of the class says he should wear goggles. And while I, I trust and hope and believe that the goggles are going to be helpful and they are the wise thing to do. Ultimately, what is my hope and my trust in? Because I can tell you, goggles can fail. Masks can fail. 
And in our world that we live in right now, while all these things we should have wisdom for what we face, our trust has got to be in the Lord. How will we set apart from this world? Because God's presence is, is with us, and that's what we trust in. I ask you, I urge you today, think about what are you trusting in and have dependence upon him. Find your rest in him. I'd like to give you three steps, three things to think about to put this into action in the week ahead. First of all, what part of your design are you ignoring? God made you with limitations. Have you been ignoring what maybe a limitation is? Are you getting your daily rest and a, a day of rest every week? If not, it's time to start thinking about what you're missing and doing that better. What are you ne neglecting? And, and I'd like you to get very specific. I know one thing for me I've had to do is in this time, in this season, I, I think it's critical. I tr do my best to stay healthy. So I've been giving myself a bedtime. I would urge you to do the same. I've asked the staff here at Bethany to move our staff uh, meeting and we moved it to a different day so I could take a day of rest. That's now Mondays for me. I'm taking a day of Monday, the day Monday to be a day of rest so I can recharge. And I believe that will make me a better Dad, husband, pastor, I would urge you to do the same thing, but it's going to take thoughtful planning for that to happen in any of our lives. What rest looks like for you might look different for me, but we know we must take that time to do that. And last, what does healthy dependence, ultimately, while we might do all these things, it's this dependence upon God that matters most. I'd like you to rem remind you of our verse of the week. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This last week, I took a phone call from a very, very distressed, stressed person, a person with a burden. As I listened to their story, I realized I didn't, I couldn't possibly have the answer for what they faced. And when I thought about it more, I don't know if anybody did. But I can't help but believe, I believe with all my heart that God does know about us and he invites us to give to him our burdens, what weighs upon us. He says, come to me, give me your burden. He, he says, come one more step. I know you have a heart. Come one more step and give to me what you're carrying. And I will be the one that gives you rest. As we seek and strive to know him, that is where our hope comes from. Godly grit means a daily finding, daily rest, weekly rest, but ultimately our trust and our hope is in him. May we do that. God bless Bethany. My hope and my prayer is that we find our dependence on him.